stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. That has been my theme. That's been my motto all offseason for the Baltimore Ravens because last year, as much as they were ready, they weren't ready enough. And there wasn't really anything that they could do about it, but the Ravens seem to have taken last year and been like, you know what? Let's build on that. Let's build on that and let's try to be bigger, faster, stronger, and better. But are they? How is this roster this season compared to last season? Even compared to 2020? Even compared to 2019? How does this roster, 2022 Ravens, stack up to rosters of the past? Well, you know what? Having our special guest on was so nice, we had to bring her on twice. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Again, Ravens, uh, this offseason, they've been staying ready so they don't have to get ready. So their roster right now, um, again, it's, it's, it's looking pretty good. It's thin in a couple areas, but in your opinion, comparing this right, because I felt like last year, I felt like they did an excellent job at building the roster. Minus, I felt like the only way they could have done a little bit better would be the quality of the offensive line. But, and yeah. that was even before the health with Ronnie Stanley and whatnot. But, in your opinion, comparing this roster right here, right now, what's mm -hmm. today? May 26th at 9.32 p.m. When y'all see this video, it'll be way later than that. But, right here, right now, do you think that this roster, this 2022 Ravens roster, is better than the 2021 Ravens roster? 2021? Bless you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, well... Based and minus all the injuries, obviously, but how they yeah, all of this has to be. Yeah, <laughs> oh, you're talking about we're looking at OTA 2021, OTA 2022. There you go. That's a good okay. Way to put it. Perfect. Um, jeez, <laughs> I, I gotta, I gotta think back. Uh, listen, listen, I did a nice little chart here for comparing it to 2019. Okay. 2021, I haven't deeply thought about it because so, I do think. Uh, Bateman, I think, hit it right on in his interview with Marlon Humphrey. And he's like, I don't care what anybody says. Before all those injuries went down, we were like Super Bowl, you know, quality. And I do. I remember looking at the um, the roster and being like, oh, this looks good. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking Ronnie Stanley was going to be back. <laughs> and yeah. I was like a little bit nervous about right tackle, but I thought Ronnie Stanley was going to be back. So, no, yeah. the reason why I would put this one ahead – of that one is um, I do think the offensive line is better. I'm very optimistic that Ronnie will be ready this time, mm -hmm. but even if he weren't, there's way more depth, way mm -hmm. more depth to handle right. his loss. Mm -hmm. um, I also believe the secondary is better because of safety. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because you because you put safety in with the corners. I think the right. corners are probably about the same. Yeah. Um, tight yeah. ends has the potential. Yeah, tight ends I think will be better. Wide receivers worse. Running backs again. We're thinking OTA time. Mm -hmm. I think the same quarterback the same yeah. i would give the edge to this one okay uh, yeah i'd give the edge to this one now with but in my mind they're getting houston back in yeah yeah <laughs> you that, know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. I, I figure that's gonna happen too but yeah. let's let's take it back even further because you said you got your chart on 2019 oh let's talk i did about it up. you gave me you gave me an assignment you gave me a little rundown so i went <laughs> i went deep you want to go should we let's go? go go ahead all let's right it, all right quarterback it's Lamar, Lamar, Trace, Tyler Huntley. Okay, uh, you I would like to say that Lamar more experienced might be better than 2019 Lamar, but 2019 Lamar was MVP. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep that as a wash. Okay. Um, 
Um, running back, I have as a wash, Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram was a stud that year. He had mm-hmm. a thousand, over a thousand rushing and 250 in the air. Okay, so can J.K. Dobbins do that? Oh, yeah. I think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gus Edwards, 7 11. I think he could do that again. Justice Hill, I think, is going to be cut. Then they had Patrick Ricard. Patrick Ricard now is way better than Patrick Ricard. And he had, I think he'll be better. Um, I like what I like is I imagine if everybody's healthy, Tyler mm. Beatty would come in above Mike Davis. Mm. And I am excited to see him in the passing game. Yeah. Um, so I have it as a wash, though. That was a historic year. My question is, is can this group of running backs put up 2,000 yards? Because that's what the 2019 squad did. I think they can. I don't know that Lamar's going to put up 1,000 rushing yards again, but I think mm-hmm. this squad could put up 2,000. Go ahead. Yeah, and one, one thing to think about with that, and really with any statistic, especially offensively and defensively too, but uh, specifically offensively, is that that was 14-2. and two. That was a 16-game schedule. Now yeah. it's the 17 oh, games. Yeah, schedule. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and then add in whatever the average is, I think they could average the same game average. Yeah. I think this this squad definitely can. Um and, but man, just just to go back real quick, um, with Lamar Jackson. Yeah, that, that was MVP Lamar for sure. Um, but now with one thing that I'm looking forward to with Lamar and, and last season, like it's for me, I already had confidence in it, but last season, like, really, like, oh, oh, yeah, there we go. All right, it's official now. Um, with the being down, that there was the narrative. Oh, being yeah, down, yeah, 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 multiple yeah. Multiple scores. Oh, Ravens can't throw their way back into a game. Oh, Ravens can't pass through. But they did it, and they did it multiple times, and they did it over and over. Now they did dig themselves into a lot of them situations, but they they dug themselves <laughs> yeah. out of a lot of them too. And yeah. even some games where they did lose too, they still show like, hey, we can come back. We can throw that ball and make some stuff happen. So this is a more seasoned Lamar Jackson going into year five. So I'm looking forward to that. But all right, go ahead. Please. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're on the same page so far. Wash and wash. Quarterback, running back, eek tied. Mm-hmm. Okay, wide receiver. Woo! Mm. 2019, it was not a good year. <laughs> all right. Marquise Brown. For, yeah. This is rookie Marquise Brown. Put mm-hmm. up Injured 585. Too. Okay. That was it. And injured too. He only had up 585. Do you, yeah. would you take I like more? Yeah. Well, and then how many of that came in that Miami game? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> would you take year one Mar- Marquise Brown or year two Rashad Bateman? I'm giving the I'm definitely giving the edge to Bateman, not just an edge. I think Bateman, I think Bateman can have a thousand year yard season. I think he can put up what Marquise Brown put up last year. Yeah, yeah I think he can, especially with the targets and opportunity. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I definitely think he can. And then if he does more, then gravy, gravy. Okay. So now wide receiver one, wide receiver one, I give an edge to this year. (laughs) Given how thin it is, it's kind of crazy. Next up is Willie Sneed. He put up 338 receiving yards. And then Miles Boykin, 198. Chris Moore, Seth Roberts, Jalen Scott. Oh, yeah, Chris Moore. All not much. Okay. Do we have a Willie Sneed? On the roster, I'd like to think Devin Duvernay could do that. Uh, yeah. Three thirty-eight. Three thirty-eight. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's. Come on, <laughs> with the opportunity uh, again. I still think you're going to sign somebody. So right, whether right, you sign right. somebody or Devin Duvernay, Devin Duvernay has got to put up at least three thirty-eight. You know what yeah. I mean? So then you got James Prochet. The person I'm most curious about is Telon Wallace. Yeah. Or Tylen Wallace, I, I never yeah, know. Tylen I hear, it, yeah, I hear it said every, both ways. But Tylen Wallace, that guy's a dog. He was in college. He's got traits. He hasn't had mm-hmm. as much opportunity. I'm curious about him. So anyway, so I put Rashad above Marquise Brown. You'd like to think these guys, one of these three guys, could step up and produce what the others did, but I don't mm-hmm. know yet. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I think because of Bateman over. Marquise, I'm going to give the edge to this year. And it's a very low stand- standard, though, to clear. Yes. And yes. It, it is. Uh, and I, I, that's a big comparison that I hear a lot of people make. They say, hey, well, look at our receivers now. They're better than what we had in 2019. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's probably true. 
but still nothing wrong with adding. But the standard is like yeah, down exactly. here. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I gave a slight edge this year. Okay. Tight ends. I'm giving, I'm giving it to 2019. Well, Hurst, yeah. yeah. With Hayden Hurst. Now Mark Andrews in year five, he's going to be right. Same as Lamar. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be better than year uh, two, but year two is still pretty good. He had 850. Okay. Um, so, so, so Mark Andrews against himself, I think is better. Nick Boyle. Mm. He's already yeah. at OTAs also, right? We saw him there. Uh, that's looking good, but I can't put Charlie Kolar or Isaiah likely on the same level as Hayden Hurst. Um, and that's what unlocks the magic is mm -hmm. having more than just Mark Andrews. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so I'm not there yet. So I give, I give it to 2019 on that okay. offensive line, Ooh. 2019. Come on, man. Ronnie Stanley, mm -hmm. Bradley Bozeman at left guard. Hall Matt of Fame. Skura, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Matt Skura, I, I'd like to th hope Tyler Lindebaum can better, can be better than Matt Skura. Marshall yeah. Yonda, Matt Zeitler has been solid, but he's not Marshall Yonda. And then Orlando Brown, I'm not seeing anybody on this roster that, that, is better than him. Oh, I can't project. I can't project that. Right, right, I can't project right. that I'll Moses or Falele or McCary is going to be better. What he was in 2019. Right. So I think the offensive line was better, but I still think that this offensive line is the best since 2019. Yeah, um, with 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 the oh, offensive line. So oh, go, you still talking about offensive no, line? No, no, go ahead, go ahead, okay. go ahead. Um, something that I, that is I'm looking forward to with the offensive line. Last year as center. It was Bradley Bozeman. That uh, was Bradley Bozeman. Uh, I think McCary. Oh, yeah, McCary might have gotten there a little bit. Oh, Tristan Colon Castillo. That was, he he got in there for a little mm. bit. Um, Cause I know Bradley Bozeman was like six for one game or something. Um, yeah. But Bradley Bozeman, throughout his professional career, uh, he had been playing left guard. Of course, in college he played center, but his professional career he played left guard. And I'm uh, pretty sure it's one of those things. The Ravens like, okay, he's one of our five best offensive linemen. We want to get him on the field. All right, cool. Um, but now, and then he moved to center in that his last year. Uh, but now, and then Patrick McCary, who I'm pretty sure he, he never played center in college. I forgot what position he did play, but it wasn't center. But anyway, when Matt Scorer went down, of course, we in that Monday night football game against the Rams. McCary came in, did his thing. Um, but there was still that lack of consistency at center. Mm -hmm. uh, but now with Linderbaum, what I'm looking forward to from him is that he is somebody in college, he plays center. Mm -hmm. And now in the pros, mm -hmm. he's still going to be playing center. So mm -hmm. there's that consistency. Ravens haven't had that consistency at the center position in a long time. But now they'll yeah. have somebody there who's been been there and been doing that from college, but he'll still be continue to be, to be doing that uh, in the pros too. All right, that's a great yeah. Well, no, and I what I just add on to that, like Lamar makes offensive linemen look good, but I want other people to make Lamar look good. And I think that starts with like making him feel mm. comfortable from interior pressure. So I'm hoping, mm. like you said, just developing a rapport and also Tyler Lindenbaum, man, on those poles, uh, watching this man go and block downfield for mm -hmm. these running backs for Lamar, that's going to be fun, fun to watch. <laughs> so anyway, so overall, I, 2019 offense better than 2021, at least my projection, or 2022, at least that's what, based off of projections. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what the tight ends do, and we'll see what happens with this offensive line. You know, so we'll, we'll see. Interior defensive line, I give 2022 – the, the lead, 2020, 2019, Brennan Williams, Michael Pierce, Daylon Mack, Chris Wormley, oh. D'Amato Pico or Peco? Pico, oh, I believe. Pico, Pico, yeah. He had a good year that year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Justin Justin Ellis and Zach Sealer. Okay, oh, so put too. that up against Calais Campbell, Michael mm -hmm. Pierce being back, Justin Matabike, rookie mm -hmm. Travis Jones, Brent Urban, Derek oh, yeah. Wolf. I don't know, Derek Wolf. I mean, he's got For a bear now. on his back. He's we'll got see. a bear on his back. We'll see. We'll he might see. have free agency on his back soon, too. I don't know. Man. Yeah, we'll see but come we'll June see. 1. We'll yeah. see June 1. Broderick Washington, Khalil mm -hmm. McKenzie, Isaiah Mack, Aaron Crawford. So I give I give it I give it to this year. Brandon Williams, great run defender, mm -hmm. obviously. But I think this this can be better against the pass. 
this this unit in 2022. Um, and you got Michael Pierce back who can come and do uh, the run game. And I'm very excited about Travis Jones. Mm -hmm. So I, that interior defensive line I didn't think was great that year. Not terrible, but not great. Uh, Edge. I gave... <laughs> I gave it to 2019. Matthew Judon, Tyus Bowser, Pernell McPhee, Tim Williams. Jihad Ward had a good year that oh, year. Oh, Jihad. Mm. Yeah. And then Jalen Ferguson. So, um, so Odafe Owe versus Matthew Judon. Who knows? Maybe Odafe can become, you know, a little bit more. Uh, he started out great. Maybe the shoulder, mm -hmm. you know, had him kind of trail off at the end. Right. Tyus Bowser. Here's the thing. I think by the end of 2022, this group could be better than the 2019 group. Okay. But I don't know about Tyus Bow Bowser and obviously Ojabo. But if those two can come back, mm -hmm. then by the second the second half of the season, this group could be better, I think. Because that group was not stellar in 2019. Yeah. It was okay. It Judon was and Bowser led it. Yeah. Um, so middle linebacker, I give the edge to 2022. Basically... 2020 or 2019 josh Bynes, lj fort patrick owasso who yeah kenny young and chris board oh, chris well, board kenny, was mostly kenny kenny young got shipped out right for marcus peters hey it worked out right along mm -hmm. yeah uh chris board with special teams patrick queen and josh Bynes, i think is a better duo than josh Bynes and lj fort although i loved lj yeah, um nice. But, but I think year three, Pratchett Queen. And then there's Malik Harrison, Christian Welch, Diego Fago, Josh Ross, and a whole lot of other undrafted rookies. So it's mm -hmm. it's thin both, but I gave an edge to this year with with Queen and Bynes. Now, one thing yeah. um, about Josh Bynes, there's, and he mentioned it in his presser too, which uh, it, it makes a big difference for him. Remember uh, back in 2019, they started off with Peanut and, and Kenny Young, or Patrick Onwasso and Kenny Young. Yeah. And it wasn't looking so good. So they signed Josh Bynes uh, at week, was it week three or four? I forget when. But they signed Josh Bynes early on in the season. They signed LJ Ford early on in the season. Um, and then last year uh, with Patrick Queen, you know, he was struggling quite a bit. Uh, so they brought Josh Bynes back again uh, during the season. Um, and when Josh Bynes has come in, he's he's done pretty good. He's not the most athletic, but he reminds me of like a, a linebacker version of Eric Weddle. To where they're not the most athletic, mm. but but they're smarts. With their smarts, they're at the right place at the right time. Exactly, they're they're where they're supposed to be. Right, but now and that was with Josh Bynes coming in in the middle of the season or early on in the season. No training camp with the Ravens, no OTAs, no none of that stuff. But now they signed him before the season, so he'll have the OTAs, he'll have the training camp, he'll have the full off season mm. with the Ravens. So that should benefit Josh Bynes. Yep, yep, I agree. Uh, okay, cornerback, I might need your help on this. I, I said it was a tie. Okay, obviously, Marlon Humphrey to Marlon Humphrey. Peters mm -hmm. came in, in uh, that in midseason. Right. Marcus Peters, Mark, Marcus Peters. Okay, so then I've got Brandon Carr. That guy was dependable, too. He was. Um, versus Kyle Fuller. Hmm. Okay, mm. then you've got Jimmy Smith versus Brandon Stevens. It's Jimmy... Oh. Only plays half the season. <laughs> I yeah. think Brandon Stevens will play the full season, so I gave the edge. Yeah, he did. I, I'll give the edge to Brandon there. Kyle, I don't know what to expect from him. Obviously, he started out slow in Denver last year, but then he rebounded. I think he'll have a better time in this system with all these guys around him. Yeah. But I, I don't know if – can I put – would you put him above Brandon Carr? I don't know. I don't know mm. Kyle Fuller enough, the 2022 version. So, in the end, I just said it was equal the cornerback position. Yeah, I, I will go with that because, yeah, Fuller got benched last year. Um, but yeah. ho hopefully that would be like a a humbling and, and, and not even a humbling, but just a motivation for him. And then he, yeah, like you mentioned, him being around all these other good cornerbacks, um, that can take a lot of pressure off of him uh, and just allow him to do his thing. Um, and, again, everything is barring health, of course. But, um, man, Kyle Fuller, Brandon Carr. Brandon Carr, he wasn't the best corner. He wasn't the worst, but he wasn't the best. He was dependable. Yes, he, that's yeah. dependable. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I like Brandon Carr a lot, man, but um <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So I'm calling it equal. You good with that? <laughs> okay. Look at you laugh. <laughs> Oh man! By the way, also in 2019, it was Anthony Averett, but he didn't do a ton. Oh. Maurice Kennedy, remember? Okay, I'm in oh. Marshall, Cyrus Jones, Bennett Jackson, Justin Bethel. So, oh yeah, anyway. Bethel. Yeah, they kept flip flopping with Bethel, and uh, they kept signing them. And that's uh, oh, they yeah. oh, that's when they were going back and forth with the Patriots. They were messing. Oh, with them that's that right. Game. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That was All fun. right. Safety, easy call. 2022, better. Earl freaking Thomas getting pushed around by Derrick Henry. Uh, yeah, that, that was rough. Mm. That was rough, but I guess during the season he was pretty good. Chuck mm. Clark, Tony Jefferson, Deshaun Elliott didn't play much, Jordan Richards, Anthony Levine, which is special teams really, and uh, Brandon Trawick. Remember him? Oh, true. Yeah, 28. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, so again, this now. year, Chuck Clark and Tony Jefferson, you have both those same guys. Marcus mm -hmm. Williams, Kyle Hamilton, we're already up big time. Geno Stone, or Darius Washington. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I go yeah. now. This yeah, year. yeah. And then I all I did for special teams was kicker and punter. It wasn't going to go much different. I gave an edge to 2019 just because I'm not going to put Jordan Stout above Sam Cook. Right. But – Hopefully, whatever. That's this should make a big difference. I don't, but we'll see. Who knows? Maybe uh, yeah. we're spoiled. Maybe we're spoiled. So anyway, overall, I put the offense better in 2019. Uh, I put the defense better in 2022. I think the defensive line is better. Uh, I think the safety. I think the secondary is better because of safety. But mm -hmm. overall, I give 2019 um, the nod for okay. being the better roster. Okay. Okay. So hopefully and I, I think with 2019, um, a lot of what they did, it, it just came out of nowhere. It, it caught the NFL all the way yeah. off guard. Um, I think they did a lot of uh overachieving, which is obviously mm -hmm. a great thing. Um, we loved it. Uh and they just yeah, they they just came out the blue and it was like, Oh, okay. These Nobody knew how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're just like, what do we do with this? Yeah. Yeah. So now it's like, okay, 2019 happened, 2020 happened, and that was that whole COVID year. Uh, but then 2021, it was just oh my goodness, all the injuries and whatnot. It was a nightmare. Ooh, yeah, that was rough. And you know what's funny? Well, not even funny, it's kind of sad. I remember um early on in the season, somebody in the comment section, they would ask me like. Early on, for like the first couple of weeks, they were like, "Man, does this season remind you of 2015?" I was like, "Oh man, we we did lose quite a few people, some significant people, but does it remind me of 2015? No, nah, man, because we still got the quarterback." So another week would pass. He's like, "Hey, does it remind you of 2015?" I said, "No, it doesn't. Stop saying that. It doesn't remind me of 2015." Then Lamar went out. I said, "Oh man." That's that's yeah. it, man. Yeah, this this 2015 all over. Yeah, again. now it's worse than 2015. Yeah, because you lost the, the quarterback thing. and all the others. And then on top of that, what made it um it reminded me a lot of 2015 because obviously the injuries, but then the close games too, because in oh, 2015 yeah. they only lost uh, two games by more than one score. Yeah, uh, and then this game, I mean this season, uh, uh, so many of the games were decided by one score too. And it was like, oh man, it was it, it it was rough. It was really, really rough. You know what was which which game this year was I don't want to use the word frustrating, but which which game this year was the most upsetting for you or tough for you or heartbreaking for you? Which one was it? Ooh, there were a few in that uh -huh. six game loss streak. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um uh, I'd have to recall my give me give me give me some, give me a couple of yours so I can like Mine's, refresh my memory. I'm trying to block out 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was Rams Rams game because I just I, I knew that Ravens were going to win that game even though they had 50 million guys on the roster that were out. Rams were coming in hot. I, I knew the Ravens were going to win that game. Yeah. Then Chuck Clark he gets his pick six, gets another pick. Uh, and oh, the, yeah, yeah, the Ravens are they they in there with it, and then down to the end of the game, I think it was like a fourth and four, or fourth and five, and it was like, oh, they just just make the stop, let's go. All they got to do is make the stop, and then yeah. I think uh, Odell Beckham Jr., he ended up catching the first down, maybe even the touchdown, and 
Uh, so they end up coming back and then, of course, winning. But that that game was just ugh, that was tough. Um, yeah, that I was think- frustrating. I think that one. Oh, I'll tell you which one was the most frustrating for me was Dolphins. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that was ugly. Dude, yeah, that was ugly. I mean, come on. That was oh, ugly. Yeah. That, like the offense couldn't do anything. And it just felt mm-hmm. like there were no adjustments. It was just like. Oh, and Lamar was still in the field. So at least like with the other ones, it was like, well, Lamar wasn't there. Mm-hmm. But oh my gosh, that one, that one killed me. Yeah. yeah. But the that, Rams, that Rams, I didn't have expectations to win it. I'm trying to remember. I feel like the Ravens, I feel like Steelers, the last one was also bothered me a little bit. Oh, the, the, oh, the last game of the season? Yeah, because that one I felt like there was actually a chance. Because yeah. Steelers have been playing so poorly. Mm-hmm. And I was like, obviously, we won't go deep into the playoffs, but it would just be nice mm-hmm. to, like, send send Roethlisberger out on this note. Mm-hmm. It would just be fitting that the Ravens send him out, and they just couldn't do it. So, But but Dolphins probably was the one that bothered me the most. Mm. Yeah, that, that game was uh, nasty. Um, we were there for that one. A lot of Ravens fans. I mean, Ravens Ew. fans always show up, especially yeah. in Miami. Yeah. But – um. Yeah, that was, that was just nasty. But for, for me, like the games where Ravens just absolutely getting smacked around, those games don't hurt me as much um, because it's like it's not close. And so your expectations as the game goes on, they keep getting lower and lower. But it's yeah. those, those close games. Those close games are the ones that, that are the most painful for me. Yeah. Those are the ones that hurt the most. Well, because especially when you have no hope because your whole – rosters injured so you go into it with no hope <laughs> and then they just tease you yeah. they just tease you here you go mm-hmm. here you go and then boom lose anyway it's like why'd you even have to get my hopes up <laughs> you know? yeah ravens are good for that they uh that, that's one thing about them though they uh despite whatever the situation is they um yeah they do fight they don't always win all the fights but they do fight uh so i do appreciate that about them because um that's that that's a good trait to have mm. um now before we get out of here can this ravens team with this ravens philosophy do you think they are capable of winning a super bowl um yeah yeah i think so um yeah i think that there's a lot of people who obviously don't think that uh, I've tweeted before that I don't care to be a cheap imitation of anybody else. Oh, like crap. Mm-hmm. In the, yep. In the NFL. Mm-hmm. And I know uh, there's a lot of people that look around and they just see other offenses designed mm-hmm. completely different than ours. There's mm-hmm. definitely a lot of people that uh, feel like just let Lamar open it up and all of that. I'm people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you're one of those people. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, just to clarify, when you want to open it up, mm. you don't. You're not saying to become pass first over run first, are you? Or do you want it to become a pass first offense? I yeah, I would actually do pass first. Really, um, my biggest yeah. thing though is not not even necessarily balance, but just uh, adjusting. And uh, it, it all obviously depends on game by game. Um, but just to really get the most, because I feel like with the run game, Ravens are always, they're always going to be able to run the ball. And, and they they got Lamar, they got J.K., Gus, and whoever else is back there running back. And as long as the offensive line is straight, they're going to be able to run the ball, and as long as they're healthy too. Um, but as far as passing, I just, my thing is, I, I would like the, the volume of the passing to be upped. Um, and last year, like if they could combine last year passing offense with but with health this time with 2019 running offense i know i know it's kind of hard because the 2019 rushing offense like they they went absolutely crazy uh yeah. and their passing game that year was really based off of efficiency but if they could do like a combination of both just to really open up the offense and just have yeah. more options um cuz again last year they showed us like hey they they could do this thing they can do it and they did that with an injured squad so mm-hmm. with them healthy, if they could just have a good combination of both, really, whether it's yeah, pass yeah. first or run first, whatever, but if they could have a real good combination of both, I think something that you mentioned, I think I think the last time you you were on here, not even not balance, but uh not symmetry, 
Wow. Harmony. There we go. Harmony. Harmony. Yeah. There you go. Yes, that's, that's yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That would now, be yeah, I'm a big proponent of harmony. I, 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 I don't want to be one dimensional. Obviously nobody can be in this league. Um, mm -hmm. And the season that the Ravens finished number 32 in passing offense is unacceptable. Um, you you can't win that that way. And like you said, I saw major improvement in the pass offense last year. I don't know what that's going to be with Hollywood gone now and, and just Bateman in, in the wide receiver core. But, um, but yeah, I think, I, I mean, I, did you see that, that Bengals, I don't know if he's a reporter or a fan on Twitter today, making Ravens Twitter. Upset, oh yeah. The, the, fluke, fluke, the fluke Super Bowl, mm -hmm. fluke Super yeah. Bowls. And like, it just made me think back on how obviously it's a different era, but Ravens, one in a different way in 2000, obviously mm -hmm. in a very different way. Mm -hmm. Um, and in 2012, I didn't, under, well, I didn't understand his point with the fluke there. The Ravens were like in the playoffs, like five times in a right. row and we're exactly. just in the AFC and championship one, game or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> three, bananas, whatever. Yeah. Three out of the um, five years, it was at AFC championship and every yeah. year they won at least, a, at least one playoff game. And even, even back to uh, 2000, the 2000 team, that was a historic defense. Like that defense had been destroying people all year. Uh, so they just kept it up in the playoffs and did their thing. So I, when he, when he did the whole little fluke thing, I, I just laughed at it. And then um, for the 2012, uh, yeah, they had been knocking on the door for the, the past four years. And then that fifth year, they just busted open. Uh, Andrew yeah. Luck, they, it's, it's like in the playoffs that year, they defeated the, the few, well, it, he used to be the future till he retired, but they, def they defeated both the future and the past of the NFL. Uh, the future was Andrew Luck. They took care of him. Uh, the, the past was Peyton Manning. Um, I can't even say Tom Brady was a past cause he ended up still being part of the future too. Then mm -hmm. realized he was going to end up playing for the bucks. Uh, what? 2012, like uh, nine, 10 years later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they took care of business. And then with Colin Kaepernick too, he was the present. So they, they took care of business against the, the 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 future. I mean, excuse me, the the current, the past, the past, the future, and the present. Oh, there you go. The yeah. past, the past, the current, and the future. The, you know the, what I'm the talking past, about. The past, like the it. present, and the future. They, I got oh, you. Oh man, thank yes. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I, <laughs> I do think 2022 can see that harmony. Okay. Right. I don't think it's going to be past first. I don't think it needs to be past first. But it's got to have harmony, which it mm -hmm. lacked in 2021 for sure. Mm -hmm. And and but to me, to me, the main ingredient in that is offensive line. Mm -hmm. I think I think Lamar Jackson had to be Superman because of the offensive line. Mm -hmm. Not I saw open receivers last year. I saw open receivers last year. I think Bateman is going to be open. I think Mark Andrews is going to have five people on him and Lamar's going to throw it anyway. And he's going to come down with it 95% <laughs> of the time. Okay. I think that I think Nick Boyle is going to be a game changer to have both Nick Boyle and Patrick Ricard. I think that one of these tight ends can be, can try to become something similar to Hayden Hurst, play that role, whether, whether they'll do it as well. I think they can play that role. I think the defense is better equipped this secondary, if the test is going to be the Bengals, man, let's see you. Let's see you do this. Let's see what all these pieces can do with Jamar Chase. Mm -hmm. So it is not going to be easy, no. but but I definitely think the pieces are there. You're going to have to lean in. It's going to be bully ball again, and you cannot do bully ball without the offensive line. And to me, one of the main things that has happened every time in the playoffs is the offensive line just gets smoked. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and so like that to me, I think the, uh, the passing game can go and the running game can go. If this offensive line can go, that to me is the major linchpin in this whole offense is that offensive line. And then, you know, you add in one more veteran. I think the receivers will be fine in a tight end centric passing offense. It's not what anybody else is doing. We know that but I think that it can work. I really do. So, but we'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not, I don't see this. I don't, 
I feel the same concerns as you at wide receiver. Um, and so, but, but we'll see, we'll see. So you talked about, um, the offensive line is good. Uh, then it should be a go. The offense can go. The wide receivers can go. Now, if you had two, two go-to moves, one for offense and one for defense that would help put this team over the top. You may have mentioned them already, but what would they be? What do you mean by go-to moves? What like what a, would, a play or oh no no player? a play, player or you know what either one something well, that no, you I... feel, feel could put this def I mean this offense and the defense could help put them over the top. Thank you for adding in maybe a play too to make it even. Well, I didn't I didn't know. Yeah, so somebody that can put them over the top. <laughs> over the top. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Or even if it's not somebody, something. I'll let you generalize it too. Well, the obvious is the health. I mean, oh, I need okay. I need Ronnie That's I need Ronnie one. Stanley there. I need Ronnie Stanley there. That is. Mm -hmm. I said the offensive line is the linchpin and Ronnie Stanley's the linchpin to the offensive line. Oh, yeah. So, so there's that, but beyond that, I need, I need Bateman to become who I think he can become okay. and be a thousand yard receiver, a okay. thousand yard plus. So I think he can do that. And mm -hmm. I need one of these rookie tight ends to, to be a threat that the defense has to acknowledge. Mm, okay. You know perfect. what I mean? He's so not, not like this doesn't have to put up, you know, 500, 600, even, you know, 700 yards, that kind of stuff doesn't need to do that, mm -hmm. but a threat that opens up the offense a little bit. And okay. so, and, and can, can confuse people a little bit. So, um, so there's that on defense, holy crap, again, health, um, mm -hmm. on defense, I need, I, Cause I feel like Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey are going to be who they are. I feel like mm. the safeties are going to be good. Um, I would love to see Travis Jones become a, you know, a solid rotational piece in his, in his rookie year. Mm. But I really want Patrick queen to like mm. in his third year, I mm. want Patrick queen to become what the Ravens envisioned when they drafted him. It's time. Mm. It's time. It's the okay. third year. Bring it, Patrick Queen. We need you. That's real right there, especially because this is a really big year for Patrick Queen because the Ravens, um, after this year, they have to decide whether they're going to pick up his fifth-year option or not. Yep. So this is uh, huge. That's that's a good point. So I wasn't thinking about that one. All right, Sarah. Well, this was a lot of fun. Appreciate you uh, coming through. Before we get out of here, please let everybody know where they can find you at. Most of them probably following you already, but let them know where they can find you. <laughs> at SG Ellison on Twitter. Perfect. And I will link that down below in the description just in case you get lazy and act like you don't know how to spell, even though it's simple spelling. I'll put it down in the description. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much. And any last words before we get out of here? No, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate you having me on. Um, I'm hoping to have some, some, mm -hmm. uh, good news, you know, and all that to, to, to talk about, to make Ravens, our Ravens community, not fight all the time. You know what I mean? So, uh, that's what I like about coming on here. I know that, that you and I, uh, both love the Ravens uh -huh. have some opposing views, oh, yeah. but no, no anger. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. just, just talk it out team. Keep it, keep it clean. I love, I love it. <laughs> I love to come, come visit. So thank you for having me on. <laughs> Hey, I appreciate it. Thank you. And we out.